All right. Good morning. Today with Gardening with the Masters, we welcome Michelle Witte. Michelle has been a master gardener in Sandoval County since 2020, but her love for houseplants and growing things began long ago. Her first houseplant was the spider plant that you'll see near her today, but it was the Tradescantia that got her hooked. When she is not tending to her plants, you can find her on Facebook page called Gardening in Rio Rancho. Today, she'll talk about what to know before purchasing a plant and how to care for your plant. So I'm gonna turn it over to Michelle. Michelle, thank you for your presentation. And I'm gonna, yep, I'm gonna mute myself and you go. Thank, thank you, Meg. You guys can see me okay? Yes. Hi there. Welcome everybody. Hi, thanks for joining me today. Um, you know, I don't really consider myself a master of plants when I'm walking into the hardware store, but you know, I'm going to make that turn at the door and go right over to those house plants. I'm going to see all that stuff right there waiting for me to show up. Um, I see pinks, variegated plants, stuff with flowers, large plants, tiny plants, all kinds of stuff. And I know I can take care of that, right? But wait, can I take care of that? I'm not really sure sometimes. So today we're going to talk about what to look for when buying a house plant and what considerations to make before you buy the house plant. Um, please feel free sometime during the presentation to grab your house plant and think about some questions that you might have after I'm done with my talk. Okay, so when it comes to house plants, size does matter. Look at this little tiny aloe vera. See how small that one is? So cute and you might wanna get it cause the pot's so nice. But that plant can get bigger than me. It can have lots of babies. It's gonna need a lot of room. It's gonna need a lot of room for a bigger aloe. So size is definitely gonna be a consideration that you will uh, wanna think about before buying your house plants. Also growth patterns matter too. Uh, while buying a plant in your local garden center, it's really easy. Uh, it's gonna take you about a minute to load your basket up, like I said. Um, knowing what they're gonna need and which ones suit your space is probably trickier and most important. The best, is to, the best thing to do is just to research your varieties before you purchase them. And that way you'll know where they're gonna go as soon as you get them home. You don't have to think about where they're gonna go or how much light they are gonna need because you're already gonna have a spot ready for them. Um, let me give you another example here. And I know um, everybody might say this differently, but it's called Trade Escantia. There's more than 150 varieties in the uh, local department stores and hardware stores and plant stores. You're gonna see about maybe five or six varieties, but this variety stays really compact and tight. This one's called Pink Dragon. And then this one is called Red Gem. It's gonna take over your entire house. The leaves are humongous. They get very large. So just because you think you like some Trade Escantia, research that variety and make sure it's the variety that is gonna fit in your spot. Um, those plants are also gonna need some different lights depending on which one you choose. Um, next most important thing about getting a houseplant home from the store is don't bring home any pests. Pick up the pot. You want to check the underside of the leaves. You want to look at all these little spaces where everything can hide. And you want to look in there and make sure you don't see any webs or any um, evidence of pests, anything that's going to come home to your houseplants. Because if you have uh, pests in your house plants, they're eating that plant and they're taking nutrition out of the plant. 
And at some point when you get it home, they're gonna jump off your plant onto other plants. So you don't wanna bring any pests home ever. Um, there's, I guess the most common uh, pests that you're gonna bring home are gonna be uh, spider mites, um, mealy bugs. Um, those are two things that you just really wanna research a little bit and make sure you know what they look, look like. I'm gonna give you an example here. It's a little tiny cactus earring. Let's see if I can get that in here really good. See that little end of the earring? That's how big a mealy bug is. They're really tiny. So they're not gonna be as big as a squash bug or, or even a fly. They're very small. Um, the other bug that people ask about that they won't usually see in the store is going to be fungus gnats. And fungus gnats are not gonna hurt your plants and you're not gonna see them in the store, but you're gonna see them when you come home and pour yourself a nice big cup of coffee. Uh, Cause you're definitely gonna get one sitting in your coffee. Anybody ever had a, a fungus gnat in their coffee? Okay, let's see what we got here. Um, the other um, question I get most commonly, and Scott has a photo of this for us to see, um, it's the soil fungus balls. Let's see if Scott can get that picture. There we go, perfect. Now, if you see this, sometimes it can sit on the top of your pot. Sometimes it can sit at the bottom of the pot where the drainage is. Um, I've seen it even in the outside saucer where um, the water will sit. It'll start leaching out of the soil. But these are little fungi balls. There's going to be fungus in your soil. The, micro, the microorganisms in the soil are feeding on this. The roots are feeding on this. There's no reason to disturb it. It's not a sick plant. This is completely fine for any house plant. So if you see this, you don't need to worry about it. Thank you, Scott. Um, let's see. Next, we're gonna talk about potting mix and moisture levels. And it's, it's important to always check the potting mix moisture level before choosing your plant. Um, check the soil to see if it's moist. Um, carefully pull the plant from the pot. And I know that sometimes people get a little nervous about this, but trust me, nobody in that nursery is going to deny you looking at the roots of your plant. And you just pull it right out. And you're gonna take a look and see what's going on in there. Is there any, you're not damaging anything by taking a look. So you just pop it right out of that plastic container and look to see what's going on in the bottom. Do you see any roots? Does it just soil? Did it fall apart when you pulled it out? Those are all things you're gonna to wanna to know before you purchase that plant because you don't wanna purchase anything without roots. You don't wanna purchase anything with too much circling. And something like this is, is a little too much circling. Did you see that circling going on right there? There's a little bit of, of roots gathering up, but it's not too bad. It depends on how, how bad do you really want that? You wanna fix it? You wanna maybe separate some of these babies out? It depends on how much you want that plant too, sometimes. So plants in the purchased in the box store, they spend a lot of time in huge greenhouses that have tons of lighting. Uh, most of those plants are getting watered daily. And these are not the conditions of the sales department where we buy them, and they're not the conditions of your home. Um, most plants are gonna contain soils and mixes that do not do well inside your home environment. So keep in mind that even though that plant looks fine in the, in the department store, you may still have to repot that. And, and I, um, I know we don't have time to talk about repotting today, but uh, maybe the next class inside my greenhouse potting station, I can show you exactly what to look for and how to repot your plants. Um, you guys should all comment repotting in the comments if that's something you're interested in seeing. And we'll get a class together and 
and show you how to repot all your stuff, what kind of soil to use. So no roots, um, root rot, root bound. Um, even if the soil moisture looks fine and there's, um, uh, there's no uh, rot, there's no moisture issues, there's no water sitting at the bottom of the, uh, the catching tray, uh, everything looks good. Is there uh, visible roots coming out of the top or underneath the pot? Uh, sometimes they're coming right into the saucer, like I said. Um, plants like philodendron and pothos, they like to be nice and tight root bound. They like to have a lot of roots inside that pot. That way they can soak up as much water as they can. Uh, but I would avoid root bound plants again, unless you're uh, planning to do some care on them. Um, the other type of root bound plant that you're gonna find, you know, you see all those things sitting in, in clay pots that you buy, especially this one. This one's gonna be in, in Lowe's and Home Depot all the time, this white pot. And it's really hard to get out of the, the clay thing. It's got a lot of room in the bottom. It doesn't actually fit. I don't know if you can see that, but so the there's going to be water sitting at the bottom. Um, these plants can struggle, but this one, I want to show you the roots on it. Just one root popped out the bottom. And if I pull this plant out of the sauce, out of the pot, um, there is no roots around the sides. There's just that one sticking out the bottom. So I would not consider this a root bound plant because there's just a root that found its way out the bottom and it's leaching water at the bottom of the pot, which is totally fine. Um, you don't want that to gather up too much. And of course, when you pull it out, it's gonna break. So I always snip this off with the scissors before I try to pull it out of the pot. So that way you don't have ripping roots. Um, you're also going to find plants that have zero roots and definitely avoid those plants. Um, they're not going to live with any, without any roots. Um, and again, just without disturbing the plant. I mean, this one doesn't even have a plant and I don't worry about it because as soon as I got it home, it was 50% off or something. I just cut all the living, this is begonia. I cut all the living stuff right off the top because that was root rot, but for $5, I couldn't avoid it. And there's zero roots in here. It's all black soil. There's nothing, nothing to see. So of course you want to avoid that kind of plant unless you're ready to do some work on it. You really need that begonia, then you better get it, right? Um, the other thing you're going to find is that, uh, you have some nice looking plants. Maybe there's three or four inside the pot even. You get this really good sized pot and, you, and the plant's not doing too good and you don't know what's going on. Yet. Well, sometimes this is how big the roots are. And that's why your plant isn't doing well because there's no roots. It's not gonna last in this huge pot with no no uh, way for the roots to get all the way down to this water. So you want to check those roots. It's the most important thing when buying a plant is checking your roots, because even if it doesn't have any leaves, you can still grow some of those, but you need to have some nice, um, good stems on there that you can propagate um, or just buy a beautiful plant that looks amazing. Don't get all those problem plants coming home. Um, the next consideration you're going to want to make is good lighting. Uh, flowering plants and food plants, um, they're going to need south windows or they're going to need a plant light. Uh, there's so many options for good indoor lighting, so make sure you get something that stays or that says uh, full spectrum on the bulb. Um, that's the most important thing about your lighting. Um, that full spectrum is going to make sure that your plants get everything they need to grow big and strong. And if you're doing seedlings inside, of course, same thing with those. Um, but try to use as many south windows as you can for house plants. Uh, note that uh, 
some sun loving cactus and succulents and food plants are still going to need some lights, though. Um, that south window is not going to be enough lighting for them. And electric can be really expensive. So um, make sure you research that plant's lighting needs before you purchase it to make sure when you bring it home, you're going to have those lights ready for it to sit under. Um, let me show you a couple of good. Sorry. And here's a good flowering house plant, a calancho. And I think that uh, Scott has some uh, pictures of all the different calancho flowers that you can bring home, all different colors of, of uh, calanchos that you can enjoy the flowers inside your house all year long. Um, there's so many colors and they're coming out with different colors of calancho every day it seems like as soon as i get the one i there we go all different kinds of calanchos and all those calanchos inside even um a good sunny west or east window are going to flower really nice for you and they're low water usage so you know you don't have to pay attention to them as much as as others they're easy to propagate uh, make sure you can give all your friends some calancho for Christmas. Okay. Thank you, Scott. Okay, so make sure when you get those flowering plants home that they do have some good light. That's going to be most important. Uh, they will survive in other areas in your house, but they're not going to give you those pretty flowers if you don't give them enough light. Um, the next thing you want to consider is watering and fertilizer. Okay, this is where your time comes in and your time is the most valuable thing. Uh, how much time do you have for care on this plant? Some plants are going to need weekly watering and, and um, some such as succulents, like I said, they can wait even a month, some of them can wait for watering. Um, so you need to research that variety and know what it's going to need. Um, also, uh, chlorine and chloramine in the water, it's disputed by some to affect the plant. Um, either way, just let your water sit for 24 hours and you don't have to worry about chlorine. It's going to dissipate right into the air. No worries. Uh, some, some plants are going to need um, uh, rainwater or distilled water, like carnivorous plants, like flycatchers. Um, these plants will definitely die if you try throwing some calciumated Rio Rancho water on top of them. They do not like it. So make sure you get um, a good idea of what kind of stuff that your plant is going to like or dislike before you purchase it because a couple watering of, of a fly catcher with regular water and your $15 is right out the window. Um, many varieties of fertilizers are available to use. Uh, some plants are going to like an alkaline soil, some like that pH balance of, balance of 7.0. So again, research your variety before you bring it home. Um, using a diluted fish emulsion is going to suit most of your house plants. Um, fish tank water, I, I also use that when I'm using fish emulsion. I only use um, half of what the recommended dosage is. So, um, do some experimenting with your plants. Um, see what they like. Best, most important thing is to do not over fertilize. You don't want to over fertilize your plant because that's going to be instant devastation. Uh, you're going to look for small blue, green, or white balls on the top of your house plant. They're not like the, the fungus balls that I was showing you earlier. They're actually hard little balls. And this is slow release fertilizer. If your plant has some of that slow release fertilizer on it, you're going to want to pause on trying to fertilize that plant right away um, or even within the first month. You're going to want for some of that to dissipate. It actually turns a little brown and mixes in with the soil once it's used up. Sometimes it doesn't fully disappear, but um, it'll just it pretty much disappears when it's used up. So if you still see some of that on top of your plant, you're going to want to pause on fertilizing it until that's somewhat gone or until you do a repotting on that plant. Um, the next thing to consideration on your plant is humidity. 
In-home humidity can be very important for both plants and people. Uh, having uh, humidity less than 20% can be very bad for uh, a human as well as for a plant. Uh, some baby plants can't unfurl their new leaves if it's too dry. Uh, having your humidity over 50% can also cause mold issues inside your home. Um, but some plants are going to love 50, 70. I, I even have a couple plants that love 90% humidity. And of course, those ones you can't have sitting on the table. You're going to need some kind of a um, cabinet or a terrarium, an old fish tank, something to put those in when you get home. So that way they don't get dry because within 24 hours, they're going to shrivel up like a dried piece of bologna. Um, ferns, alocasia, prayer plants. If anyone has prayer plants or nerve plants, you know when you don't water those things, they just look like they're going to be dead. And then you water them, they spring back to life. Um, so if this is the kind of plant that you're going to have time to maintenance and, and keep your eye on, then you should note that those plants can be drama queens. And overall, just don't buy anything that you don't have time for. Um, Scott has a picture of some philodendrons. And, and it, philodendron, I think, is the most common, one of the most common varieties of plants. Um, there's actually more than 450 varieties of philodendron. Um, tiny leaves, uh, large leaves, some that can grow over six feet tall, some leaves that are big as my head, some that are tiny as a fingernail. There is four, more than 450 varieties. So if you start collecting these, Good luck, better have a lot of room. Um, uh, okay, thank you, Scott. I love these plants. I could just look at that picture all day. Um, but if you start getting too many, even if you know what you're doing, you can get overwhelmed. And this is gonna show in the care of your plants. So make sure you plan ahead, um, research before you buy all your plants and have a spot ready for them. And my other suggestion is keep your receipt because most large plant stores have a one year return policy. And I ain't shy about using it because I can use that to get another plant. And I don't care what they say on TV, but it's not hoarding if it's plants. Thanks everyone. We have any questions? Thank you. Thank you, Michelle, um, for that. That was really fun. And I love that you said that nerve plants are drama queens. <laughs> I was trying to do tell have, Do you have one and it's a drama queen? <laughs> no, but I just love that characterization of a, of a plant. <laughs> it, it is a drama queen. <laughs> we have about an hour for, um, for questions um, and answers. Um, and I'll ask that there's a question, at least one question that came through in the chat. And if you have questions, you're welcome to type them in the chat. Or um, if you would like to ask um, Michelle your question or even show her the plant that you're talking about, you're gonna need to turn on your video. And if you'll just um, use the raise hand function at the bottom under, there's a little thing that says reactions and there's a raise hand thing and I'll see you to be able to call on you um, to ask your question. Um, and I just want to remind everyone, if, in case there's people who need to hop off, that this, this whole thing will be on the Gardening with the Masters website um, as soon as we can get it there. And um, we have our next one will be on February 25th, and that will be vegetable starting and variety selection. And so, um, so questions, let me see. The first question, oh, that's pretty. <laughs> the first, Zabrina, go ahead. Yeah. Zabrina quad color. That's my favorite plant since you asked at the beginning. That is beautiful. Yeah, I love this one. Sorry. The, and that's okay. The first question I have here is for a purchased root bound plant. Do you recommend clipping or shearing of the circular root or should you separate out the outer plant parts with the roots intact when repotting? 
That's a great question. That's an excellent question. And, and every pot is going to be a little different and it depends on the variety. Is there, is there a particular variety that you're asking about? Or I don't know if that person's on or they were asking live or you no, it was me. Um, oh, okay. Michelle, uh, Sandy. And um, just, you know, like, you know, for vegetable plants and trees, uh, if you have a root bound uh, specimen, you know, you can just shear or, you know, clip off um, excess roots and circling roots. And uh, I, just, I don't know if that applies to purchase, you know, to house plants or not. I, uh, because sometimes they have more than one plant in a pot. So. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes, that, that's so true. And, and it does work the same as with trees. Um, with, um, with philodendron, uh, I tend to remove, you know, they always wanna put three plants inside the pot. That's their magic number. Even with those huge baskets of Tradescantia, there's only three plants inside there. And then they have all these arms coming off. Um, and yeah, you can just shear the, the bottom roots off just like you would a tree, but with a philodendron, you're going to need to shear those roots off and then tug it away. You're going to just kind of wiggle it. They will come apart. They, they look like they're entangled, but you just wiggle them a little bit and they're going to come apart. And then you give each of those philodendron their own pot is what I always recommend. Um, because sometimes when you get too many unlike the the soil in the ground where things can kind of stretch out a little bit when you have a 10 or 12 inch pot there's no stretching and those roots will just fill up the soil and the soil disappears don't ask me where it goes but it just disappears and at one point you start looking in your pot and it's just filled with roots um, and, and yeah, that means it's time to separate it. And yes, circling roots, you won't be able to get any of those plants apart unless you just kind of shear off the, the bottom. You know, just try a little bit, see how much it takes. If you need to do a little bit more, get a good kitchen serrated knife and just cut right into them. If you have a nice healthy plant on top and you have a nice pile of roots inside of your pot, then um, that plant's gonna pop back with no issues. Uh, plants are meant to break off in, in wild and travel down the road a little bit. So us doing it with a little bit of care is, is definitely fine. Yeah. Chop right. them up. Thank you. Thanks, Michelle. There's another question here about philodendron and it's um, somebody's wondering why the philodendron new leaf gets stuck. Yeah, I put that on the, did, did there, is that the Cinderella? Did somebody see my Cinderella post on Facebook where you know how she tries to fit her her foot in the shoe and it looks all like crinkled up and you can't even well that's what the the philodendron leaves that get stuck i'm trying to see if i have one i don't know if i have one which is great <laughs> um yeah i don't have one but they get stuck because of humidity and because maybe they don't have enough water um and, and maybe they do have enough water, but there just isn't enough humidity. And, and when I see a leaf that's just been stuck like that for, you know, you've been checking it and seeing if it's going to unfurl and you're just excited and you're waiting to see it. I just missed it. I keep a little mist bottle. I have five or six all over my house. I know that there's one in each room. And if something's going to look like it's not gonna pop open or I wanna see that special leaf or it's been sitting like that for more than a week. It, it should only take a few days for a leaf to unfurl. Just give it a good misting. And I bet within a couple of days of misting it, it's gonna pop right out. All right, thank you, Michelle. I see Nicole has her hand raised. You wanna come off mute and um, ask your question, Nicole? Hi, yeah. I. <laughs> I was just, she just kind of answered my question, but I just kind of wanted to show you guys if I can. I don't know how to do this camera. Let me see. You look good. I can see. I can almost see it. Um, Cause it's stuck. Like. Oh, pink princess. Yeah. And it looks like it's gonna, it looks like it's gonna break if I don't, <laughs> I know I'm not okay. supposed to mess with it, but yeah, I, I do put it next to a yes. humidifier right now. Yes. I can see two stuck leaves, two yes. stuck leaves there. Okay, so what you might wanna do is, yeah, you said you moved it next to the humidifier. What you don't yeah. wanna do is overwater it because you're nervous, you know what I mean? 
Um, okay. You hear me say that it needs more, more moisture is definitely not in the soil. That one's going to be uh, in your air. So it could be that it has just a little bit too much light, even though it, the leaves look perfect. I don't think it has too much light at all. I think it needs more humidity in the air. And you have a, humid, okay. a humidifier in your house. Yes. Um, you keep that at about 30, 35. Okay. And that should, uh, yeah, keep your in-house humidity at 35 and, and maybe see a little bit less of those, those leaves okay. hide from you. Will do, thank it's you. Beautiful, I love it. Thank you. Uh, Michelle, I have another question here. Um, do you have, is there a good app that you, rec that you would say that we, to use to identify a house plant with? Um, no, there isn't. <laughs> Uh, there is several apps and and i i have them all downloaded um if you take that plant and you go to each app each app is going to tell you it's a different plant <laughs> so um when and i and i use the google pictures too i start with google photos and i google the picture and then i go to the next app and then I go to the next app and then I figure out what you know based on because everyone's putting their pictures in there saying Oh, this is a Calancho. This is in that Calancho. You know what I mean? They they don't know what it is, so they're identifying it for other people mistakenly. So sometimes those apps are not reliable. So um, my favorite thing to do is get on Facebook and ask all the plant people because they're live plant people. Um, they, you know, you go to a philodendron. You know, you have a philodendron. You go to a philodendron page, and you say, Hey, I have this. And I, I guarantee like five people are gonna rattle it off within seconds. And, and if they don't, that means you have an uncommon plant and that's even more special. So right. I hope thank that's you. helpful. Yeah, thank you, Michelle. And just um, for everybody here, I did put um, Michelle's Facebook page into the chat. It's called Gardening in Rio Rancho, correct? Yes. yes. And okay. you can note that we sell all that, I, I don't know, we might go to the, the farmer's market or to the Corrales market, but we do all the, the Sandoval Extension Master Garden plants on that page. So if you guys need gardening plants, we'll definitely have some gardening plants on that page. Okay, thank you. Um, the next question here has to do with orchids and um, the, the, they're wondering about how is the best way to get orchids to produce new flowers? So orchids, of course, we're not in the tropics. Um, orchids, uh do not do well in potting soil or potting mix they need a special orchid mix um, orchids in nature will grow attached to trees which is bark so their orchid mix is a bark so if you have your your orchids i've seen this many times where orchids got potted up in some soil that's going to be an issue there um, I, i've also seen people watering their orchids with ice cube not appropriate. Um, yes, tropical rainstorms are very cold, but this is a totally dry and different environment. Going from a dry environment to some ice cube is not going to be uh, what your plant would want. So uh, your that particular plant, think of it being in a tropical forest. Which part of your house is the most humid? which part of your house has the most bright light without being direct light because orchids don't wanna get hit by the sun because they're under trees. They're being shaded by leaves and branches. They're not getting hit by the direct sun. So the, you're gonna to wanna to copy what that plant would do in nature, put it in a, in a bright room where it's not getting hit by the sun, it's just getting a lot of bright filtered light. Um, and if you don't have that bright window, you can go right to the hardware store and look for, they have screw in bulbs that screw right into some nice lamp that you have right there in your living room that you turn on at night. Put a plant bulb in there and see if that um, little bit more light on orchids is gonna give more flowers. So, and usually when something's not flowering, I usually determine that it's because it doesn't have enough light. Um, that's not always the case, but. Okay, thank you. 
Um, another question came in. What are your thoughts on propagating with a heat mat? Um, house plants? Well, that's what we're talking about today. So yeah. Uh, <laughs> no, I don't think you need a heat mat. I, I don't use a heat mat for even, even my seedlings. You know what I mean? When you have um, a nice warm uh, window, a south window, there's a nice warm spot there. Um, those that's great for for seedlings uh, for me anyway some people like to have a heat mat um but uh but for house plants you're never going to need a heat mat I, I don't i have never needed a heat mat no okay and the second part of that question is uh propagating um would you recommend soil moss or perlite uh it depends um let's see i even have I have this little that here's that trait of scantia that I pulled off of you or off for a second here. And you're just going to remove that bottom leaf there. There's a node. You can see the node right there on the plant. And then you're just going to stick it right into the soil. And that's it for trait of scantia. Stick it right in the soil. Um, for uh, philodendron, let me see. For spider plants, water. Look, your spider plant's going to be sticking out the top, but only the bottom part gets water there. That's going to give you your roots. Uh, let's see what else. Oh, yeah, you guys got to see this. Here's another uh, philodendron. This one is. Um, um, white prints, and you can see the little root. I don't know if you can see the little mm -hmm. white roots coming off of there. Um, it's just in a shot glass full of water. You know, what I mean, I don't drink tequila anymore. I'm too old, <laughs> so I gotta use these shot glasses. Uh, but yeah, I, I'm more. We're in the desert, so you know they're gonna need water. Well, those nodes that are gonna be in the water that's how they're gonna pop out. They like the water. Um, you know, I have a lot of uh, collector friends that use moss. And the reason they use moss is because moss has some kind of deterrent to mold. It, um, you're not gonna get as many rotting issues when you put a plant in moss. But you know, that takes more care. Now you gotta see if the moss is dry. Now you gotta check it and to see, you know, if it's over wet, did you put enough holes in the cup so that way that moss is draining out? So it's all a personal preference um, with some of the stuff. Um, any particular plant that you're propagating? Um, so I'm going to let that person respond in the chat or raise her hand if she's asking about a specific kind of plant. I'm going to go on to the next question while we wait to find that out. Um, and this one, I'm not sure if I'm going to pronounce it right, but this person's asking, where can I find the, the less, oh, it's just disappeared. Where can I find the less popular varieties of Sansevieria? Did I say that? San Sansevieria. Okay, so here's a leaf that I'm propagating for Sansevieria. Oh. They, they stick up like this. The mother one. Yeah, come away there. There we go. So yeah, you can cut these in little little tiny pieces and stick them all in the dirt and you have like a hundred plants in about a month. Um, but you know where I see a lot of Sansevieria is Osuna Nursery. Um, I know that the, the nursery caretaker there is, is addicted to Sansevieria. So, and she's from Mexico and boy, she'll order it up. Was that the question? Where do you find it? Well, yeah, I think that's... Okay. That's the question. Um, the next one is, does a grow light need to be above a plant or is it okay if it's below the plant? A grow light would need to be above. You want those lights um, as close as they can without showing any burn marks tomorrow. Um, and it depends on your variety as to how close they're gonna be like a food seedlings, your light's going to be right up on them, you know, a couple days of them soaking up some water and then that light's going to be right up on them. Uh, with philodendron, that's going to burn the leaf. Um, 
you're going to want to have um, a grow light and it depends on the strength of the grow light. There's so many different kinds of grow lights that, you know, some are going to show off that pink light and some of them have a purple light and some of them are white lights and some of those pink lights bother people. It's, it's your preference on what you'd like to get. Um, and of course it's about money too, because some of those, uh, lighting units can be very expensive, but I know the hardware store has those screw in bulbs are $7. And if you put one of those about uh, 24 inches, 36 inches away from your philodendrons or any house plants, they're going to be really happy unless it's cactus or succulents. I strongly recommend that those sit in the south window. They really need to see some sun. Okay, thank you. This is a, um, okay, this, let me, I'm just gonna read this to you. I have an azalea I got before Christmas that is barely hanging on. I don't have good light in my house. I have an Eastern and Western light in my living room, but don't think that's enough light. I'm thinking this is a high maintenance plan. I don't wanna lose it. What is the best way to take care of it and hopefully save it? I'd love to see it. I wonder if she's, if she's here. Sometimes uh, looking at the plant, I can really get a better idea of um, the soil conditions, um, what the plant is if it's kind of drooping, or is it losing leaves close to the soil? Are, are the leaves yellowing in a particular spot? Might be an indication of needs more water or not enough. Um, Wendy, do you want to? Um turn on your video and show let Michelle see your um your if that's possible video, yeah it's possible and while you're while you're doing that I'm going to go on to um another question just to see, just to give Wendy some time if she wants to do that if she's able to do that um and this question is do you have any experience with desert rose plants any tips would be appreciated um on my page, there's a, a woman named B B. It's B E D E, and she's uh, she's my expert in those those desert roses. Oh my gosh, aren't they amazing? Those flowers, oh, they're so yummy and delicious. Um, those plants are, of course, going to need to come in, in in the winter time. But where you're really going to see your action with those is in the summertime, outside in full sun. And when those aren't getting full sun they're gonna have issues during the winter time. They really need to get that full sun. And, and I'm looking at azalea right here too, and it kind of reminds me of the same thing. Those are both flowering plants. They love to flower. They're gonna need a lot a lot more light than, than most of your regular house plants that you're gonna see. So um, giving, giving those flowering plants more light is always what I recommend, but a desert rose definitely wants that full sun in the summertime uh, for at least a few hours so that way it can get those flowers forming. And then mine goes dormant kind of in the wintertime it even loses leaves it, sometimes it looks horrible. Um, but in the springtime I stick it back outside and it it does amazing and do not overwater those desert roses in the wintertime. All right, um, Wendy's not not able to show a video, so I'm just following up. She's oh, she says, um, okay, we we might come back to her. Um, this is a, quest, a question about Christmas cactus, um, mm -hmm. and this person says that they have a Christmas cactus that hasn't bloomed in two years. What am I doing wrong? Is there not enough sunlight? Okay, give me one second here. I want to show you something. Okay, everybody always says Christmas cactus, but I can pretty much guarantee it's going to be a Thanksgiving cactus. See those little teeth on there right there? If yours has little teeth on it, it's a Thanksgiving cactus. If it doesn't have any teeth, then that's a Christmas cactus. And I've never seen one in a local department store. Um, I only know of two people in Albuquerque that actually own one. The other one is Easter cactus. Same type of plant, but it has a round leaf. It's completely round. 
So these are all basically the same care, Thanksgiving, Christmas, or Easter cactus. Um, these are all, they say cactus, but are they really a cactus? I mean, if you sit them in full sun, they will burn. You'll see the burnt, the leaves just shrivel up and fry. Um, you can acclimate them to some sun. They will take a couple hours of full sunshine outside in the in the summer, but they'll burn if they don't get enough water or, um, but if you're not seeing flowers on it, it's not enough light. Um, an east or west window, my east or west windows, uh, my, those cactuses don't bloom. I just propagate off of them. My south, uh, my south window cactuses, Christmas cactus, Easter cactus, um, they bloom at least four times a year and they're right uh, maybe a foot away from the south window. All right, so move to the south window, it sounds like. Um, and Wendy, okay, everyone, everyone needs a south window. Okay? Yeah. <laughs> Wendy's got her, um, can you see it? She's got her azalea on the video right now. It's got white flowers on it. Can you see it, Michelle? Um, there. How do I zoom into hers? View gallery. Let's see if I can. Oh yeah, it is flowering. Yeah, that plant's gonna like to be outside in the in the. Do you put that thing outside in the summertime? Um, I say some good morning sun. Look at how nice it is, and it's right there, right next to the window. Um, so it's getting some 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 window light. I'm wondering if that's a south window. And if you're trying to talk, Wendy, you're muted, but you're welcome to unmute yourself. And I, I still can't. She she says oh, no. in the chat she says she can't do audio and video at the same time. So, well, she's is, that a, so is that a south window? Um, she, there she is. Okay, let me see. Let's see. I got you. I can hear you now. Oh, you can hear me now? Yeah, I can hear you now. Oh, great, great, great. Okay, so um, no, I just have uh, Western and Eastern. Okay, so my I have two windows, uh, Western, and then I have a clerestory window that's Eastern. So I don't have very good light in my living room, but yeah. Uh, maybe you have like a little patio or a somewhere in the summertime. In the wintertime, those flowering plants are, are just like, oh, you know, they've been flowering all summer and and they're right. kind of maybe kind of go a little bit dormant. And in the wintertime, I don't snip flowers off of too many things unless I know that they're um, looking sad because flowers right. are going to take a lot of energy away. And so in the winter time, I tend to let some of my flowering plants rest. And as soon as I see that flower, I enjoy it as much as I can for the day. And I snip it off at the end of the day, um, give it a little bit of rest. And then in the summertime, maybe try to put it um, on your patio a little bit and make sure you get that um, acclimated to the sun before you don't just put it out there one day, give it a uh, 15 minutes of sun the first day. And then maybe uh, for a couple of days, the same. And then um, maybe 30 minutes, graduate up to a couple hours after that, and then see if that's gonna do okay on your patio uh, with it, or if you have a patio, but those are, those are gonna need some nice uh, full sun. And it's gonna need more water when you put it outside too. It's gonna drink that water up almost every day. I can't hear you again. Uh oh. I can't hear you. Wendy, I think we could hear you when your video wasn't on. I know, that was different, huh? <laughs> Let's see. Ah, now you know, yeah, now I can hear you again. Oh, great, great. Okay, yeah, there we go. Um, okay, so for now that I can't put it out, it's too cold. What, I mean, what's the best thing for me to do? Well, it's flowering, so I mean that doesn't mean that that it's not it, it's doing okay if it's flowering. I mean, I would personally, like I said, I, I would probably cut those flowers off. Okay. And, okay. and um, that way, it's not trying to spend all its energy on flowering. Um, okay. It doesn't. Is it losing leaves? Yes, it is a lot. Like, real, yeah. 
as it's, they're dropping. It's in bed. It's trying to take a nap. I mean, you know what? Really? Just yeah, you just cut those those flowers off, and that way it can suck up some more of that energy that's getting to the flowers. And okay. in springtime, I bet it pops right back to life. Don't don't get nervous and try to overwater it or do something different than that you haven't been doing. Okay. Um, because in the winter time they're not drinking as much, and it, and if it is trying to flower, it, it probably is trying to drink a little bit more. So I would just snip okay. those flowers off. Okay. Put yeah. them in a little separate vase and enjoy yeah. them as long as they last for you. But yeah, okay. that way your plant can can uh, it's like a nursing mother with triplets. You know, they <laughs> they, just, they needed a break, and and uh, and if it's still telling itself to flower, then it's using up a lot of nutrients. Okay. Okay. All right. Well, thank you for that. Thank you, Michelle. I am going to put out a call for questions. Um, raise, go ahead and raise your hand if you have a question or type it in the chat. Um, and in the meantime, I'm just going to remind you all that our next Gardening with the Masters online is on Friday, February 25th. And we'll be talking about vegetable seed starting and variety selection. And I put um, information about the gardening with the, the masters um, webpage into the chat. That's how you can register just the way you registered for this one. And I also put a link to our helpline so that if you have questions for gardeners or for your garden in the future, you can ask a master gardener for help with that. But then if you have questions today that you didn't get to ask Michelle, um, then you would just go to, um, let me see, do I have it in here? Um, you just go to GWM, Gardening with Masters online at sandovalmastergardener.org. So it's an email to her. And I'll put that in the chat too, because I can't, I probably butchered that. But we have a couple more questions coming in. Um, I need help with my money tree. I can show mm -hmm. video. So, okay, Jody, why don't you go ahead and, oh, there she is. She's right there. Okay. <laughs> I like that. I can show okay, you. So here it is. But my leaves keep turning brown and it just looks so sparse. My money tree is not very healthy. <laughs> Let me see that root ball again. What is going on over there? So did you purchase it in that moss? Yes, it and I still have the direction sheet from it and it says to leave it in there and to soak it in water. So I like put it in here with water and I let it soak Then I completely drain it so that it's just sitting open. And they said, whenever it gets dry and lightweight then you water it again. And so that's what I've been doing and it's just not happy. Does that have a south window? Yes, but it only gets the light for like the good south light right now for like four hours a day. My recommendation on that one, and, and that would be okay care. That's the easy care for that. I, I do those too. See, so yeah, I, I don't want to whatever. I just put it in water. You know what I mean? If I put this in soil, it's going to wrinkle all up and I have to care for it some more no good you know what i mean i don't have time for all that so the water soaking thing is a way to um keep that moist without having to put it in soil so my recommendation for that particular plant is because it sounds like it's getting enough light and i can see those nice dark green leaves on the top mm -hmm. um, and it even has a couple of baby ones so it it still keeps like doing like making baby ones and stuff but then it's just, it gets sparse and then they turn brown very quickly. Are you putting any fertilizer in the water? Um, I haven't in like a month. Yeah, you might, you might bump that up to once every couple of weeks and, and don't do, um, don't do full shots of fertilizer, um, 50% of whatever, um, whatever it tells you, if it tells you to use a teaspoon, only use half, um, but but I would take a some kind of a plastic bag or something and wrap it up around that uh, pot and the root once you soak it. That way that moisture staying inside those roots because sphagnum moss will dry out and really quick. And that's yeah. like, you know, not it's about as big as this. That's going to dry out within a day. And then so 
Um, maybe it's getting, those roots are getting dry. Um, maybe try putting a, um, just a 10 cent vegetable bag from the grocery store and because those will fit over any side and see if that does anything because those, um, those roots might need to get a little bit more, um, keep that moisture for a little longer, a few days at least before it dries out. Okay. Okay, sounds good, thank you. Sorry, next question is, um, what is your favorite fertilizer and how often do you, do you use it? My favorite fertilizer is fish emulsion. It's cheap, it lasts forever, it smells delicious. Um, I, it's reliable. You know what I mean? I, I know it's, I know what's in there. It's ground up fish. You know, I don't, I don't want to put anything inside my house plants that I don't know what's in there because I got to breathe that air. So fish emulsion, once you mix it with water and, and you put it in there, yeah, it smells bad, but it, it goes away. Then by the next day, it's going to be totally gone, especially if your plants are healthy and they're drinking that stuff up. You ain't gonna smell any of any of that. You're you're I wouldn't do it before a party or anything, but you know, uh fish emulsion's my favorite stuff. And 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 I use fish emulsion once a month on just about everything except for cactus and succulents in the in the wintertime. Uh the, the other thing I use is uh fish tank water. When I do my monthly cleaning of my fish tanks. I don't waste that water at all. That's all the money and fish food that I just threw into that tank is coming back out. It's gonna go into my plants. And, and you can tell within a few days, their colors change, they look better. Um, and then you keep an eye on that. Some of your plants, some of your philodendrons, some of your flowering plants are gonna need that fertilizing once every couple of weeks. So, so keep an eye on it, especially in the summertime, summertime is when those plants are really going to want some spring and summertime because you, you're warming up. And even though our houses are 70 degrees all year long, uh, those window temperatures do change. The, the humidity inside your windows, um, all that stuff changes. So you got to make sure that you're fertilizing at least once a month is, would be my recommendation. And, and any fertilizer is completely fine. They all work amazing, but I always recommend to use half of what they say to use because burning with fertilizer is not fun. All right. The next question is, I want to put my ponytail palm outside when the weather warms up. What is the safest way to bring it back in next fall? Um safest way you know that makes me think that maybe some centipedes crawled in your house plants one time uh or are you worried that maybe it wouldn't get enough sun inside after the summer i'm not sure about the question no i just want to make sure i don't bring any insects in to infect other plants yeah yeah i um I do put my aloes out in the in the summer. I don't like to put my house plants out because I don't want any bugs coming in. I, the biggest bug for me is going to be those fungus gnats because I love my coffee. You know, I don't want to drink those. Um, and putting a plant outside, it, fungus gnats are going to be like, yeah, this soil's great. I love it. It's nice and juicy and moist. It's exactly where I like to lay my babies. Centipedes too. Centipedes are going to crawl right in there and just lay all kinds of eggs. And then you bring your pot in and you're like, what are all these things in the bottom? Well, they're centipedes or spiders. All that stuff is going to love your house plants because they're getting extra good care and extra good soil and extra protection. Um, so I always, uh, with my aloes, I I take them out. They need to, they love that heat. They like, the, they don't like the sun as much but they like that hot air. So they do so much better when I take them outside in the summertime. And when I bring them back in in the wintertime, they lose all their soil. They're completely repotted because I have too many plants inside my house to take the chance of bringing any kind of pest inside my house. So I remove all the soil. I spray it off with the hose. 
and then I completely repot it. And that's gonna guarantee that your plant has nice, fresh, nutrient soil. You're going to want to repot most of your house plants once a year anyways because of the calcium buildup uh, that we get on our on our pots. Um, so I would just make a plan to repot everything before you're bringing it back inside the house. Um, Great. Not Thank you. Mm -hmm. um, there's a question here about miracle grow. Is miracle grow okay? It works. Yeah, it works. It works. It has all that stuff in there that your plants want to. Uh, again, even with that, I say you half of what they tell you to use. Um, I'm going to direct this question to Scott. Scott, there's a couple of um, people on here who are having problems with uh, who they're viewing right now. I don't know if you can. They're still in my view. Um, I think so. But I do have a question here for Michelle. And um, Michelle, this one is, uh, and I'm going to mispronounce again, my dracania keeps getting brown crisp parts. Can you tell me how to prevent that? You pronounce that perfectly. Oh, good. <laughs> um, that's, a, that's definitely going to be a water issue. When you're getting crispy, um, crispy, brown at the edge of a plant, that means it's not getting enough water. That could be a soil issue. Maybe your soil is full of calcium and when you're watering it, you see the water just flush all the way down. It just pours out. It doesn't go in and you know settle like that. It just pours all the way down to the bottom. That could be a soil issue where your dracaena is not getting enough water um, or humidity. Um, Inside browning of the leaf, if it's browning from, from not the tip, but near the stem instead, instead of the, the tip, um, then that's gonna be an overwatering problem. Um, so you wanna take a look at that leaf and if you see the edges, the tips getting brown, that means that uh, it was thirsty for too long and it's starting to lose part of that leaf so that way it doesn't uh, hurt the plant in, in a hole. All right, thank you, Michelle. Um, I'm gonna ask for questions one more time. Um, this has been fascinating, Michelle, thank you. I've learned a whole lot, including how to pronounce some of these plants' names. <laughs> Celesta says she can't see anybody. She was seeing Wendy at first. I don't know. Is, is anybody else having an issue seeing? You could try. We're at towards the end here, but if you go back up to that view in the top right corner, maybe you can switch it again. Um, oh, she says somebody was pinned on her screen somehow. Somehow she got a pin up there. Um, all right, here's another question. Um, any tips? Uh, any tips for a prayer plant? I just got one and it sounds tricky. That's another one of those drama queens. You'll notice when you don't water it, it's just gonna, it's gonna be like, uh, like it's dead. It acts like it's totally dead. The leaves are gonna look all shriveled up and looks like it's gonna, and then you water it and like within an hour, it looks like it's totally fine. And you're like, what the heck's going on? Uh, those, it's a water, that's a humidity and watering issues. Um, those plants, when you bring them home and, and there's going to be a lot of moss inside the soil that they sell those plants in, I highly recommend that you, uh, try to get that out of a pot and rub those roots a little bit, get some of that sphagnum moss stuff that they have on there and put some real potting mix on there. So that way, uh, that mix is going to hold the water a little bit longer because those, the, the mixes that those come in from the store that that mod, it just drains really quick because they're just hosing they're just going around and they're hosing them and they don't want them to stay full of water so they put them in a mix that it drains really fast and that's not the mix that we want for our house so try to get some of that mix off and throw some some or that sphagnum mix anyways and try to put some good potting mix in there so that way um you're not seeing as much drama on that thing and maybe a, bit, a little bit bigger of a pot can be can be helpful, but not too big. You don't want roots swimming inside of a pot, but 
a little bit more soil will hold a little bit more water. Maybe it won't be so dramatic. Okay, thank you. And this one I missed earlier, hibiscus plants. Can you talk about hibiscus plants? Tips on caring for them just in general. A hibiscus would be outside. So, you know, that's another plant that, that's going to flower. It's going to take, um, so it needs a lot of nutrients. It needs a lot of light. Um, and yeah, outside, depending on the variety, I'm not sure if there's varieties that, um, that are do better inside as a house plant, but I would say that that plant needs more light, needs to be outside in the summertime. Uh, do, you, do we know what, what variety of a hibiscus? Okay, Susan, I'll, I'll see if you put something in the chat or if you wanna come off of mute and ask your question specifically. Um, and while she's doing that, there's a question here about brown, are brown tips on a spider plant a watering issue? Yes, yes. And if you take a spider plant out of the pot, in most cases, you're going to see these things that look like fingers. They're so fat. Those are roots and they're root uh, water storage in there. And you think, God, these things are as fat as my thumb. How are the tips still drying? Well, that they hold, they hold that water in there. They don't, they're not using it. They're using it for a rainy day. They still want to get their their, their water um, fresh every week, fresh water. With those spider plants, those plants can be so, come so old. This one right here is more than 20 years old, I'm sure. Um, I notice brown tips on it when I need to re-soak, put new fresh soil in it. That, because it's not getting enough water, you know, it's, um, those roots will fill up the pot. That doesn't mean anything. It needs, nice fresh soil so that way that old crunchy calciumated salt filled soil whatever it is it's got to go i knock off all the soil on those spider plants and give them fresh soil once a year and that brown tips will stop immediately you'll get a lot of new growth too all right thank you um so the hibiscus um is yellow with a red center she says is blooming right now in the south window Ooh, yeah so yeah it's got that south window and it and it um i loves it and then in the summertime are you are you taking it outside and give it because now is the winter time um really a dormant time um and maybe uh before let it flower a little bit um because in spring is really when it's going to want to do all its good stuff outside is where it's really going to like the weather. Um, it goes out front. Yeah. Yeah. And how does it do once you put it outside in, in, in spring, does it pop back to life or is this the first first year that you'll have it back outside in the spring? Because I imagine once you put it outside, oh, all my plants look like thank you. Sometimes it's slow to yeah. return, yeah. Um, there's another question here that says, I heard plants can drown if water is left in the saucer. Does that depend on the plant? Um, plants will not drown if you keep them in water. They're not gonna drown. Um, the problem is, is that they don't have anything to oxygenate the roots, um, that, so yeah, in a sense, I guess they would drown because they're not getting oxygen, um, but they don't drown in water. So I wouldn't say they're going to drown. Basically water and soil are going to cause rot. They're going to get bacterial issues from the soil because there's fungus and other things in the soil and that water is gonna cause rot. So that's what ends up actually killing the roots is it, it is they're not drowning, but that water gathering up with all the fungus is attacking the roots and, and they can't breathe, they're not getting air. So yeah, that's what happens when you leave them. Um, and in, in, in almost anything, even, even water loving plants, do not want to sit in a pot of soil that's in water. Um, so if you think you need more humidity, just put some rocks in that 
you know, maybe you're watering and you don't have time to empty that saucer out. Put some rocks in there so that way the pot's not actually sitting in the water. And that water that is sitting in the saucer will act as humidity as, as it's rising up instead of the pot actually sitting in it. Okay, thank you. All right, I think we've got, we've touched on all the questions that came up in the chat. Um, I'm going to remind everybody again, this is your last chance to, if you have any questions, pop them in there. And if you, if you think of a question afterwards, then certainly email, um, send an email to the GWM online at SandovalMasterGardeners.org um, and we'll get you a, a response to your question. But thank you all for being here. And thank you, Michelle. You have a wealth of information and it's been so fun to listen to you and and to laugh about the drama queens of the, <laughs> of the plant world. Well, thanks um, for all your excellent questions and, and I appreciate you guys coming. All right, well, thank you all. And we'll hope to see you next month at the vegetable seed starting and variety selection um, online presentation. We are finished and I'm gonna ask Scott to stop the recording now.